Nature is beautiful. But how do we make it in the funny 3D software? And by it, I mean grass, and just grass, specifically grass, I'm not doing anything else. When making things in Blender, there are a lot of things you have to consider. How can it be modeled? Is it better to get an asset online? Should I use particles, maybe? Maybe there's an add-on that can do my job better than I can. <laughs> oh, thank god, this isn't free, I would not have a video. But for grass, the first thing you should think about is, what type of grass should I make in relation to my scene? If you want grass in an abandoned warehouse, it probably won't have much colour, it should be quite sparse. If you want it in a big ol' verdant field, you might want grass that's quite long and wild and everywhere. Ultimately, it's a really easy thing to make, it's just a plain but small and shaped a bit. Don't give my grass body dysmorphia. <laughs> and using a system to instance them, you can actually put them into a scene in a convincing way. So to start off modeling, add a plane. What? Take this and model a grass shape. You can use proportional editing set to sharp to get the right fall off here. Give it some curl and you have a simple grass blade. Cool. Now repeat this process 20,000 more times and you get- <laughs> No, take your grass and give it an array modifier. Give that array modifier another array modifier. We're trying to make a simple grass tuft, so change the array count as much as you want for something like that. You want to keep the shape fairly even with a good amount of grass. Apply both modifiers into edit mode, F3, and separate by loose parts. You now have so much grass, it's ridiculous, but it gets even better. With the most specific of specific tools, F3 type randomized transform this tool is really good because it does exactly what it says it does, which means randomized transform tool one, the house of commons zero. The thing itself is super intuitive. Just play around with it until you get something a bit like this. Select everything and then join it back into one object with control plus J. So the point of making this is that we can scatter around just one object without it really being noticeable. I've made a really basic example, plane, scene, thing, and I'm gonna add a hair particle system. I'm not using geometry nodes, but uh, you can if you want. Sorry, CG matter. In the render properties, change path to object, and then your instance object as the grass tuft. Up the scale, and then change the scale randomness a little bit. You want the grass covering most of the ground. At this point, you can notice that it does repeat a little bit. Turn advanced particle settings on, scroll down to rotation, and then change the phase and the randomized phase. To improve this even further, we can take inspiration from the success of the Industrial Revolution. That's right, we're gonna use children. In particle lingo, children are extra particles which originate from the parent. This is usually used for hair simulation as you can calculate the movement of less particles whilst having a larger amount displayed still. But we're gonna use it for grass. Deal with it, you hair fanatics. So go to the children panel, select interpolated, and change the display and render amount to something lower, 5 or 10 depending on your emitter. Now we've got a well covered sort of wild grass field. Add in a material to the original tuft. In the shading tab, add a texture coordinate node, separate XYZ node, and finally a color ramp. Connect these up and you've got a really simple way of controlling a gradient from the roots to the tip. Change the colors to something actually grass-like, having a lighter shade at the top and a darker shade at the bottom. I like to put the roughness up higher so the grass doesn't reflect too much light. And you can also put the specular down to help with this as well. My secret ingredient to really top this off is to actually lower the alpha value. It gives the grass just a little bit more softness and you can see this working with the full field really nicely. The next step is to add movement. Add a wind force field and point it in whatever direction you'd like the wind to blow. Moving the strength slider up affects how far the grass leans. Go back to the force field tab and add a turbulence. If you move it about, you can see that the grass particles move with it. If you bump up the strength value, you can see that the movements become stronger. The size value controls how big the turbulence's texture is, and you can get some really nice wind waves going on. Add in a keyframe at the start of your animation, move the turbulence in the direction of the wind, and then add another keyframe at the end of your frames. Right click in the timeline and then select linear interpolation. This is just so we don't get any easing in and out of the grass movement. And you're done. Now this is looking good, but this is the simple method. This is two minute noodle grass. This is hardly Andre Tarkovsky level, okay? Getting a more advanced result is all about taking your grass instance, giving it the default cube treatment, and actually modeling from reference. Uh, did I say from reference?
I can hear those blender boots trembling. That's that's right. The blender users are about to be told that the best way to find out what grass looks like is to go outside. Uh, I can't make too many of those jokes. I'm insulting my own people. Grass, like most things, I think, is more complicated than you give it credit for. But there will be a lot of traits you'll probably won't have to worry about. I doubt you'll get render feedback about the size of your ligules. I think the main thing to take away from it is that grass grows in layers. Look at this, it's complicated, it's natural, and it can be broken down into layers. There's a great Kaizen tutorial which subtly lets you know about this in the thumbnail. He covers nature in general, but we're getting specific. The first thing that you'll have to worry about is ground. All you need as a basis is a texture that resembles a dirt. This can be a PBR setup if you really want to get close up with the camera, but hopefully with the rest of the layers, the ground won't really be viewable. So all you really need is a texture with a little bit of color variation. And I'm going to prove this by using a photo of me and Alastair Beckett King. Oh my god. The first layer is at the bottom of everything and is dead grass. The stuff that hasn't had room to grow. This time we want something a bit more realistic. So I'm going to model from an image. How do we get an image? That's right, we're doing it again. I've gotten a few different types of grass blades and I'll take a photo of them against a white background. The more grass you forage for, the more variation you can get. Put the photo into Blender. Take a plane and extrude it along the blade. Once you have a shape, give it a material and connect the same grass image you've used into the color. You'll then have to go to the UV tab and align the geometry up so this can actually look okay. Back in the material settings, add an add shader and a translucent BSDF and connect everything up. This lets some light pass through the grass like it would in real life. Once you have this, adjust the whole mesh so the origin is at the base of the blade. Particles spawn from the origin of their object, so having this at the root of the grass means it won't clip through the surface. I'm going to add a few types of grass to this layer as well. If you go back into the particle settings, you can change render as object to render as collection with all of the grass inside the same collection and it'll work fine. And by fine, I mean nearly fine. I had to apply rotation and now they're oriented in the correct way. I've actually buffed the grass model even more here by duplicating the blade in edit mode. This just improves how dense the ground coverage is, and you can use proportional editing to move it about a bit to give it some more variation. I'm actually going to go back on myself here and say avoid using children. For as much as it's nice to get some easy control over the density, it can also make these really repetitive patterns that become quite noticeable. Also, as a note, I'm using this sky texture to light it, and I'm giving it this really blue, sad color, because this is British grass, so it'll look completely out of place if this isn't as depressing as possible. The second layer is sprouting grass. It's standing up straight, but smaller. With the grass blades you've made already, you can put them together into a smaller grass sprout. We're going to use this method for the next few layers too. I've put it in a new particle system because it's a bit easier to control the separate densities and the scales of each layer that way. The next layer is short grass and we can start doing tufts again. Way. This is just the same method as the last layer, but making it bigger but still small, but bigger. After that is a medium layer, which is the shorter grass, but also, yeah, also bigger. The last layer is large grass, tall grass. This is really about building it well in edit mode with your grass models. Follow reference and you'll be fine. It's important to critique as you go. And one thing I will notice is the ligules are way too small, please. Now we pretty much have our grass setup finished. Now you could use the same setup we used before to get those wind waves. But this isn't as good as we can get it. Just as a note, if you do want to do that, for the ground layers, I would slide down the all factor in field weights. Just because the ground layer wouldn't really move like that in real life. The issue that you get with this, it doesn't act like it's supposed to. If I show only the tall grass, it looks a little bit like wind, but it's kind of just spinning a lot. Why is it doing that? We don't want it to do that. Now the solution around this and to get a more advanced setup is to scrap literally everything we've just done and start again. This is going to be a Houdini tutorial now, sorry. So what we're going to do is take one of our grass models and give it a particle instance modifier. This super specific modifier is like built exactly for grass and I'll show you why. Select your surface and give it a new hair particle system. Put the number down a little bit and you're ready to go. Reselect the grass and in the particle instance modifier where it says object, select the plane. Now for me, this didn't immediately work. Now when something like this happens, I immediately resort to using control A 
and applying the scale and rotation. Also, if you haven't already, Alt G resets the location of the grass, so it will be right above the plane. In the plane's particle system, decrease the hair length. Scroll down a little and tick on hair dynamics. This thing is really important for this because it allows the hair particles to almost act like a cloth simulation. And you can see we're starting to get movements that look grass-like. Why am I excited about this so much? I don't know. You may have pieced it together by now. Grass instanced on a cloth simulated particle system. Oh yeah, that's a lot of words. Enable create along paths in the particle instance modifier and we nearly get there. The grass is obviously rotated wrong here and I haven't figured out how to fix this via the modifier or the particle settings. So I'm going to cheat it a little bit and just rotate the whole grass mesh in edit mode so it's standing up straight. With the force fields going, it's starting to look really good. You'll notice that the grass's rotation is the same, so we can fix this by going into the create along paths menu and just sliding these things around. The grass is coming off my plane a little bit, and I figured out it's just because that in edit mode, the grass tuft is away from its origin, so I've just moved it down to account for that. Okay, now this grass setup is looking cool. The grass is actually bending, it's acting accurately. But this is with only the medium grass. Before I start adding any more layers to this, I'm going to go to the cache settings and I'm going to bake the simulation. This will make it so much easier to work with the rest of the layers. With a new particle system for each layer, I'll start off with the dead grass. I'm not going to instance it on any hair particles. I just want it to be ground coverage. I've repeated the process with sprouting grass and short grass, again on separate particle systems. Things can get pretty heavy for your computer here quite quickly because it's instancing so much stuff. So you can either bake each layer as you go, or you can also just turn down the viewport amount in the particle settings. The last layer to do is the tall grass. I'm gonna bake it. And then finally, you get a system which I think is really good. And then I guess the grass setup is finished. This might have been a lot of effort for a turf of grass, but nature isn't something you take for granted. Whether it's drawn, painted, sketched, simulated, there's rarely something as beautiful as trying to understand nature and jot it down in front of you. And this is all around, so when you're out and about, pause, maybe look a little closer will be damned if people don't create what they see. Okay, I'm, still, I'm actually not done with the video though, I, don't, I, I maybe should have saved this part for later. One thing that you may have problems with is when rendering, you'll get the path things actually showing up, which is bad. To fix this, just go to the render settings in your particle system and change path to none. And it's gone! Another tip is to light with a HDRI. Environment lighting works pretty well to light up environments, believe it or not. And on that note, I'm gonna leave it there. So do let me know how this video went. If nothing, I hope I passed on a little bit of knowledge. If the video does well, I'll try and keep up with uploading stuff, but we'll see. Oh, one more thing. In an effort to ensure tutorial quality, I politely asked a friend if they could test run this video. The result was really good. I'm more relieved that someone can get a natural result from something I've made. I'm happy. But the legules are terrible. Oh 